Hello students, welcome to today's online biology lesson and today we are going to discuss about a topic in form 3 that is reproduction. It is a follow-up lesson because we had uh, discussed on the introductory part of it and uh, we had looked at the types of reproduction. So today we are going to uh, discuss on the process of cell division. I want to believe that you are keeping yourself safe and that as we, as we continue uh, keeping ourselves safe, ensure that you continue studying. And one way of studying is to join us in our video lesson. So, welcome. Now, uh, today's objective is one. And that by the end of this session, you'll be expected to describe the process of cell division. Now, we want to remember that uh, the process of cell division is the one that uh, leads to multiplication of the cells and uh, by extension bringing about uh, maybe growth or even uh, enhancing the process of reproduction. Now, we want to note that uh, between an animal cell and a plant cell, the process of uh, reproduction or the process of growth is different because in animals we said that uh, the cells that actively divide are not really localized but that there is a uniform rate of division or uniform rate of growth in the animal cells. However, for plant cells, as we shall see in the topic of uh, growth and development, we said that uh, the affinity or the ability of the cells to divide are located in the specialized cells that we refer to as the meristematic. Now, these cells, for example, the cambium cells, and then the apical cells, in woody plants, because they have a higher capacity to divide, they are called or they are given the name meristematic. So in short, we are saying that a meristematic cell is a cell with a higher capacity to rapidly divide, leading to a multiplication of the cells, which by extension will bring about growth and even development. Now for animals, uh, the capacity to divide is located in one of the tissue which you refer to as the malphigian layer that is found in the mammalian skin. Now, all these, they have the ability to divide. That is, from one single cell, you can get several multiples of other cells that can further develop into a tissue, then an organ, an organ system, and of course an organism, as we learned in Form 1. Now, during cell division, we said yesterday that this process really takes place inside the nucleus of a cell, and it is because of the possession of the genetic vehicle, which we refer to as the chromosome. So, in this section, we will be looking at the various behaviors of the chromosome in various uh, stages of various types of cell division. And we realize that we have two types of cell division. The first type, which we are going to uh, discuss today, is the mitotic cell division that occurs in body cells. Body cells, sometimes we refer to them as somatic, somatic cells somatic cells. So, the type of division that takes place in uh, the body cell is mitotic. Mitotic. Therefore, the first type of cell division is mitosis. For example, in a cell such as a muscle cell, a muscle cell, the process of multiplication of muscle cells is by mitosis. The other type of cell division is meiosis, 
which occurs in reproductive structures, for example, the testes and the ovary, that leads to formation of the sex cells or gametes, that is, a sperm cell for the male gametes, and an ovum or ova in plural for the female gametes. Now remember the process of formation of those gametes is by the type of division we refer to as meiosis. Now, let's look at what happens during mitosis. In this diagram here, we are able to see one of the body cells. And we said that the type of division, uh, the, the chromosomal constitution of the body cell is diploid. That's why it is represented by 2N. Diploid. That's why it is represented by 2N. Now, a diploid cell undergoes a somatic division or a mitotic division leading to formation of two daughter cells. Leading to formation of two daughter cells. You can see this is a daughter cell and there is another daughter cell here. So, the two daughter cells, both of them, have half the number of chromosomes as was seen in the parent cell. And therefore, we represent that with N. This is a condition that we refer to as a haploid cell or haploidy. Haploidy. N says it is haploid cell. 2N, it's a diploid cell. So the two daughter cells that are formed here, I emphasize they have identical chromosomal constitution. Not, not identical chromosomal constitution. They have identical characteristics, but they have half the number of chromosomes as seen in the parent cell. And that's why during fusion, during fusion, the reverse will be true, such that the male gamete, the male gamete will contribute a half the number of chromosome, so is to the female gamete that will contribute a half the number of chromosome that will lead to a formation of a diploid zygote, a diploid zygote. Now, we will have to look at what really happens for this uh, very important activities to take place in a cell. And that's why we discuss on the process of mitosis. Now, the process of mitosis, the process of mitosis, as we said, occurs in somatic cells. It occurs in somatic cells and it leads to production of daughter cells that have the same number of chromosomes as seen in the parent. Now, during this process, there are four distinct phases or stages, but the four distinct phases forms a complete cycle in the way they appear. That is from the first one to the last one. However, for a cycle to, con to complete, there is a resting phase. There is a resting phase a short period whereby the cell prepares itself for the next activity, which is cell division. And that is the stage that we refer to as the interface. So, in this case, we are going to discuss about these phases, beginning from interface, and then the first phase of a mitotic division being prophase, followed by metaphase, third, anaphase, and then the last phase is Telophase. Now this is a cyclic event that occurs in a cell and it progresses without any interruption for a normal cell. Unless we are talking about a cell that is cancerous. Actually, a cell that is cancerous in most cases do lack the, the, do lack the phase which you call interface, whereby the genetic material uh, there is a problem or there is a defect involving the genetic material, there is 
Therefore, there is excessive over multiplication of the genetic material that leads to over expression of certain genes that uh, direct the, the formation of such, uh, certain structures. And therefore, that's why we have overgrowth of structures uh, during or when a cell is cancerous. Now, that means that by extension, a cancerous cell in most cases lack the, pro the, 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 the face interface or it has some problem associated with it. There is some abnormality. So we are going to delve into this and therefore commonly we abbreviate the four or the five phases. Remember the phase begins with prophase and then the last one is telophase. The interface is just the stage in between one complete cycle and the subsequent ones or successive ones. Therefore, we can abbreviate that with IPMAT. IPMAT, I, interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and then telophase. Now, let's look at what happens in each of these stages that we have mentioned. Now, during interface, we've said that the cell prepares itself for uh, the subsequent processes of division. And therefore, we commonly call it a preparatory stage. Now, what are some of the key events during this phase? Number one, there is multiplication of genetic material so that daughter cells that are formed will have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell, meaning that the parent cell will be diploid, the daughter cells will be diploid as well. Therefore, a retention of the genetic material. Number two, the synthesis of new cell organelles, for example, the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus, of course, these, you know, in Form 1 we discussed about their various roles involving uh, packaging, uh, transportation uh, of secretions or even uh, proteins. Then, the centrioles, centrioles structures are very, very critical when it comes to the process of cell division. The centrioles are the, the point at which the spinal fibers forms, and the spinal fibers are the ones that pull uh, the centromere apart, resulting to migration of the sister chromatids, especially in mitosis. And then, of course, the whole process requires energy. Therefore, there must be a higher supply of energy. And therefore, we need more mitochondria to be formed. More mitochondria to be formed. And of course, the packaging of the, uh, the, pro the process of synthesis of proteins. And therefore, there is need for uh, the ribosome. So these structures are formed more during interface. Then the the last one is the building up of enough energy stores in the form of ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate, which drives the process through the entire uh, stages of cell 